All right, hell from Indy. I'm going to do another uh, video today to show you how to install an oil pressure gauge. Last time we did the uh, tachometer, so we'll do this one today. And I'll just get right into it, show you how to do it. It's, it's simple. The tachometer is simple, and this is even easier than that. So I'll just show you how I did it, and then you can make some changes to make it your own. Here's the gauge I used. Uh, just cheap, cheap little gauge. Got it at AutoZone. It was 20 bucks or something. Okay. First thing you need to decide is even if you want the light or not. So if I turn my ignition on, whoop, let's use this other hand. There's the light. Okay, that's your decision whether you want that or not. If you do, let me show you. I'm having a hard time going under here. It's so hot and sweaty, I'm sticking to everything. So it's the same thing. You got the lights in the back. You can see you've got two wires coming out of this, oops, out of this little light. And this little light just pulls in and out of here. You got a red wire and a black wire. Your red red wire is your power, your black's your ground. The ground was a piece of cake. As you can see, right next to the light is this bolt that the dash brace is on. I just put a little wire from right there to here. Okay, so it went all of a couple inches to get that done. so I can see it's really hard to do but you can kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to tell you when you pull this little bolt out right here by the way I'll zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about this one right here right under the ashtray you'll notice there's wire coiled up in there that's actually a factory ground location anyway okay now I want to show you something too I didn't show you the other day how to test for a ground. As you can see, I'm over there. I've got this cable clipped to this engine brace over here. And if I touch this, my light comes on. If I touch the battery side of the junction box, okay? If I clip this brace, let me get it off here so I can just show you. Okay, now take this brace and I'm going to clip it here okay so now I've got it clipped to the gas pedal now I touch this nothing happens okay see that nothing's going on that tells me that is not a ground so that's how you can check different stuff under here to see if it a ground that's it's just that simple all right next was the red power line for the uh, light for the oil pressure gauge and I just I got under here and I tested. You can see there's all these little plugs that really aren't doing anything. I got in here with my test light with the battery off and hooked up to a ground and tested them. And I noted which ones did nothing, which all of them did nothing. Then you turn the key on, okay, then you test them again. And if one of them has power with the key on, then that tells you it would have power and run. And that would be good to use so you'd have lights on your oil pressure gauge only when the car's running, and then it won't drain it any other time. So that's what I did. I just found one of these, and that's what I used. Okay? So that's that simple there. As far as mounting, uh, I'm lucky. There's, there's factory screw holes underneath here. And I had two of them that lined up perfect, so I didn't even have to drill a hole to mount that. It actually just used factory mounting locations. The next thing you have to do is you got to get <laughs> oil to the gauge. The back of your engine, this is a factory sending unit, and there's two types. There's this for the kind of car that has a gauge. There's a black ceramic one for the kind of car that has an idiot light. You can plug into either side. There's plugs on either side. The factory normally uses this side, but it doesn't matter, okay? Or you can do like I did and use both of them. I left my idiot light hooked up, and then I hooked up to this side. You could also put a T here and run two of them off one. All that stuff's fine. I left the idiot light intact because if I'm cruising down the road, just out in the country driving, off in la-la land thinking, I really don't look down at the gauges 
uh, that idiot light would pop on and get my attention if there was a problem. But I wanted the pressure gauge with the readout on it because I wanted to know what my oil pressure is when I have a cold engine all the time. So that's why I put this in here. Okay, so I'll show you on my car. I think I can get back there and show you that. <clears throat> Let's try this. Okay, so you can see the idiot light side, and then the other side is where I've put that. Let me walk around here. I'll show you that. Okay, so you can see that, how I've run that through. So the next thing you're going to have to do is you just, and, and you can find more videos that would be more specific on the gauge, but you just have to run that tube from the back of your gauge, connect it, run it through to the engine side. I just used an existing hole because if you've noticed, I don't have the AC box or all that in my car. So this is one of the mounting holes for it. So I just created or made my own rubber grommet and passed that rubber hose through here or that plastic hose I should say to the back. A lot of people will tell you not to use the plastic and to use the brass. Uh, I can't say that they're wrong. That's really not a bad idea. I just, I did this for now. I can update it later. I feel like I'm in a pretty good position where it's not going to get hot or break the way I've got it. So I created this grommet to protect it. You also, underneath, you'll want to leave some, some coils, some loose coils. That offers flexibility in that line. You'll want that. And last thing I can really point out to you is you'll notice there's air in there. That's fine. It, it doesn't matter that there's air in there and you're wasting your time trying to bleed. It still exerts the pressure on the gauge. It's a mechanical gauge. It just needs the pressure. So don't worry about air. People try to bleed them. <laughs> it's a closed system. The engine's a closed system. If you somehow even did manage to get it bled, you'd come back in a day and it would need bled again. You'd just be wasting your time. So... I think that's it. I hope that part's helpful. Last thing I want to do is, since I've done these two videos, not necessarily this one, but at least the one on the tack, sometimes you have to solder. And I wanted to show you real quick uh, how I solder something. So these are just two wires. You just twist them together. You make an X and you, you squeeze them together. Um, but one really important thing I wanted to point out, you'll notice this solder is marked electrical and then the paste I'm using the flux there's the flux there's the solder you want to be real careful that you use the right solder if you use the wrong solder if you use a solder just really designed for 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 soldering pipe that will be corrosive to your wire and then you're going to have problems uh, very soon down the road it, it will corrode your your wire so you'll have a failure you'll have a mess. So make sure you use the right solder. Um, and then as far as soldering goes, I can do it with one hand, you guys can do it with two. Just take you a little bit of flux, put it on there. Oops, not seeing what I'm doing there. A little flux, that's good, doesn't have to be great. And I'm just gonna, now I'm doing this with one hand, I wouldn't normally do it this way, but I'm kind of showing you. You can see how that flux is melting and that wire is quickly heated up. I need to get going here. It's going to melt because <laughs> it is. You wouldn't want to do this this long. All right. And then just touch this on the top. And you can see how that. Okay. Oops. Get that off. And that's it. So let the solder. Touch the solder on top and let it filter down into it. That's how you do it. You don't try to run it down on the soldering iron. And you wouldn't want to hold it on. That was way too long. It got too hot. But I'm just, I'm just showing you to give you an idea. You let that solder just run down into the wire and it fills everything up. It gets in all the strands. Okay. Again, that was on there way too long, but I'm doing this with one hand. Okay, so I think that's what I wanted to show you today, and I hope that's helpful. Later.